Hi, let's talk about the internal iliac artery. In this video, we're going to talk about the origins of the internal iliac artery and its branches within the pelvis. We'll focus on one of those branches, the internal pudendal artery, and look at some of its branches and targets in the perineum. So the abdominal aorta is going to bifurcate into the common iliac arteries at approximately the level of the fourth lumbar vertebra. Each of those common iliac arteries will then shortly thereafter bifurcate into the external iliac artery and the internal iliac artery. The external iliac artery runs under the inguinal ligament to become the femoral artery which is the major source of blood for the lower limb. The internal iliac artery, um, oftentimes referred to by clinicians as the hypogastric artery, is going to ramify within the pelvis to serve the walls of the pelvis, the pelvic uh, viscera, as well as leave the pelvis to supply the hip joint and associated muscles, as well as the perineum, as well as portions of the proximal lower limbs with blood. So if you hear someone refer to the hypogastric artery, it's the same thing as the internal iliac artery. So let's take a look at that internal iliac artery. It is an amazingly variable artery. Um, and it's extraordinarily sexually polymorphic as well. Now, to help show some of the extremes of that sexual polymorphism, I'm going to show you uh, representations or conceptualizations of the assigned female at birth internal iliac artery. And I'll also show you um, an illustration of an assigned male at birth internal iliac artery as well. Now, let me switch over to um, green here, so that there's not an overabundance of red on this slide. Conceptually, um, the internal iliac artery is divided into divisions. These divisions sometimes are very nice and neat trunks, and sometimes they're not nice and neat trunks. But here we have somewhat of a posterior trunk, and that might be as, as good as the posterior trunk really gets. We can see the first branch here, the iliolumbar, ascending up out of the pelvis to supply the posterior body wall with blood. We can also see some lateral sacral arteries here going out to supply the, uh, the posterior and the lateral pelvic walls with blood. And then the terminal branch of that posterior division is the superior gluteal artery. That superior gluteal artery is going to escape the pelvis to supply the hip joint and associated muscles with blood. And we'll talk about that in more granular detail when we discuss the hip joint as part of MSK. Now the anterior division has very many branches and you're really going to have to pay close attention to where these branches are, uh, not just originating from the anterior division of internal iliac, but also their targets as well. And, and we'll, we'll talk about that as we progress through. So one of the, uh, the early major branches is that of the umbilical artery. The umbilical artery is going to run anteriorly through the, the pelvis towards the anterior body wall, and it's going to lose its patency so that umbilical artery uh, becomes the medial umbilical ligament. And so that medial umbilical ligament will be found within the medial umbilical fold heading up towards the umbilicus. So in fetal circulation, um, it would be patent. It would still be um, an umbilical artery um, heading up towards the, uh, the umbilical cord and the, the placenta beyond. Now in the adult, um, this artery is significant because there are branches of it that descend down 
into and serve the urinary bladder. We call these superior vesicle arteries. So when you see vesicle, I want you to think urinary bladder. Now, another major branch uh, that we can see coming off of the anterior division here, let's see, is an inferior vesicle artery. Also descending down and serving the urinary bladder. Sometimes this inferior vesicle artery may be a branch of the uterine or the vaginal artery. Um, it can be quite variable with respect to its origin. Another branch, um, especially allied with the umbilical artery, is the obturator artery. And I say allied because their proximate courses are in roughly the same direction, except the obturator artery is going to be a little more inferior, and it's going to exit the pelvis through the obturator canal and head towards the medial portion of the thigh, where it's a major source of blood for that medial compartment. So it's serving blood to those adductors of the thigh. We can also see here, um, there's a common trunk. It's not always necessarily the case, but uh, in this illustration it is. The uterine artery. We can imagine by its name that the uterine artery is going to supply the uterus with blood. And if we turn our attention up here, you may recall that the uterine artery at the internal os of the cervix is going to be found running over the ureter. We say then that uh, water runs under the bridge. In this case, water is the ureter and the bridge is the uterine artery. So recall that relationship, burn that into the, the back of your mind. At the internal os of the cervix, the uterine artery runs over the ureter. Coming from that common trunk, we can also see uh, a vaginal artery. That vaginal artery is going down to serve the vagina with blood. And there's going to be um, very frequent anastomoses between the uterine artery and the vaginal artery. So there's going to be quite a bit of collateral blood flow between these two vessels. We'll also see um, collateral blood flow between the uterine artery and the ovarian artery as well. So this is a very vascularly rich area for blood. Um, and, and in that vein, um, not only can we see inferior vesicle branches from this vaginal artery, but the vaginal artery may have uterine branches, the uterine artery may have vaginal branches, and so just pay attention to the totality of the vessel um, that it's originating from, you know, the internal division of uh, or, or the anterior division of the internal iliac artery and what that vessel is mainly supplying and how it derives its name. Uh, moving right along, um, we can also see quite an impressive branch here. This is the internal pudendal artery and we'll pick that up in a second. That's going to exit the, uh, the pelvis. And here, the middle rectal artery is a branch of that internal pudendal artery. The middle rectal artery is supplying the rectum with blood. The internal pudendal artery is going to supply the perineum with blood. And then another um, branch is the inferior gluteal artery. That inferior gluteal artery is also going to exit the pelvis to serve the, uh, the hip joint and associated muscles with blood. Along the way, it will also supply the muscles of the pelvic diaphragm with blood, so levator ani as well as um, 
the coccygeus muscles, and it can even supply some of the proximal portions of the posterior thigh muscles, the hamstrings, with blood as well. Now when we look at the, uh, the stereotypical assigned male at birth uh, pelvis, it's not all that different. So let's just not even consider the posterior division because that's the least uh, polymorphic portion of the, uh, of the internal iliac artery. We've got our umbilical artery with the superior um, vesicle arteries supplying the bladder. We have the obturator artery leaving the pelvis through the obturator canal for the medial compartment of the thigh. We have an inferior vesicle artery supplying the bladder inferiorly, and here we can see some prostatic branches from that inferior vesicle artery. We can also see an internal pudendal artery heading out to the perineum, and we've got a branch of that, the middle rectal artery to supply the rectum, as well as the inferior gluteal artery to supply the pelvic diaphragm, hip joint, proximal portion of the posterior thigh as well. So not terribly different from uh, the, the other pattern that we saw. We're just, you know, here lacking uterine and uh, invaginal branches because there isn't a, a uterus or a vagina to, to serve with blood. So let's take a look at the internal pudendal artery. The internal pudendal artery is going to leave the pelvis. It's going to escape out that greater sciatic foramen, and it's going to wrap around the um, into and through the lesser sciatic foramen. Boop, 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 boop. So let's look at the internal pudendal artery. The internal pudendal artery is going to exit through the greater sciatic foramen and then pass through the lesser sciatic foramen heading through the pudendal or Alcox canal. It will also be joined by the pudendal nerve as well as the internal pudendal vein within that canal. When it exits from uh, the pudendal canal, so that space through the fascia of obturator internus, we're going to see branches heading out towards the external anal sphincter. These are the inferior uh, rectal or inferior uh, anal arteries. There are also going to be um, perennial branches. Uh, the, these perennial branches or arteries are going to serve the, uh, the ischio cavernosus muscles, the bulbo cavernosus muscle, as well as some of the, uh, the skin um, that is about the perineum. And then we have the arteries that are serving the erectile tissue. So for instance, uh, there's the artery of the bulb to serve the, uh, bul the bulbospongiosis um, or the, the corpus spongiosum. And then there's the deep artery of the clitoris or penis, which is going to serve the corpora cavernosa or the, the crura of the, uh, the clitoris or the penis. There's also a dorsal artery of the clitoris or penis, and that takes a, a similar uh, tact to the, uh, the, the deep artery, except it, it stays outside of the erectile tissue and it serves the super tissue, superficial tissues about either the clitoris or the penis on the, uh, the dorsal surface of the, uh, of the penis. So there are several branches here of the internal pudendal artery serving various entities, um, specifically serving those erectile tissues however, are the arteries of the bulb and the deep arteries.
of the clitoris or penis. The arteries of the bulb serves the corpus spongiosum, whereas the deep arteries serve the corpora cavernosa. So we've discussed the origin of the internal iliac artery, as well as its branches within the pelvis and outside of the pelvis with an emphasis on the branches of the internal pudendal artery. This is your summary slide. Thank you for your time.